I'm going to show you how we took this MDF table, painted it white, and made it look like this realistic Venetian gold granite. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. So what we did is we started with MedX water resistant MDF. Kenny cut a 42 inch circle and then cut another circle and used it as a drop edge. He glued and then nailed the two parts together. Next, he routered the top and the bottom with a one quarter inch round over bit, sanded the sides, bondoed, and then we painted it white with the white stone coat countertop undercoating. Okay, so I've let the table dry and now comes the fun part. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a background. And the way that this granite is gonna be made to look realistic is that we're gonna do layers upon layers upon layers. So first of all, we're gonna start off with gold mica powder and it's mixed with 91% isopropyl alcohol. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna lay that over the top, let that evaporation of the alcohol happen, and then go to the next step. So what I have in this bottle is one quarter ounce of mica powder, which is half a bag of the Stone Coat countertop mica powders that I sell on my website, mixed with eight ounces of isopropyl alcohol. This is the mixture that you wanna start with. If you want your mixture to be a little bit more vivid, then you can add uh, a little bit more mica powder, a little bit less isopropyl alcohol. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start off, and we want big drops. I don't want little fine mist. And like I said, this is just the background. So don't overthink it, just get it on the surface. Keep shaking as you go because those mica powders are gonna fall to the bottom of your spray bottle. Some of your drips are big and some of them can be small. So when the alcohol evaporates, you're gonna be really surprised on how vivid the gold looks on the surface. Now I want about probably 75% coverage on my table. All right, so now I'm gonna dress the edges. I'm gonna just kind of splatter on them a little bit. Now I've got a lot of painting to still go on these tables, so I'm really not too worried about my edges. I'm just trying to get a little bit of color on there. All right. So we're gonna let that dry, probably take a good 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and do our next step. Okay, so our surface is dry, and as you can tell, you can touch it very easily, but because this is just mica powder, it does scratch very easily. So until you get epoxy on top, you want to be very gentle with this finish. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start building our layers and we're still doing pre-epoxy. So all of this is done just straight onto the substrate. So we're gonna start off first with uh, the Rust-Oleum Metallic and this is the bright and shiny finish. It's the Rust-Oleum paint that's got the bright cap. All right, it's gonna be a really pretty, pretty gold. All right. So, we're gonna take a bag. Those of you that have not used the bag technique, um, it's really fun. You can get some really cool designs. When you get your bag, make sure you turn it inside out because see this ink? That will actually trance um, pose onto your finish. So take your bag, turn it inside out. And then what you're gonna wanna do is when you when you don't wanna just make your bag to where it's flat like this, okay? You wanna have some texture and some character. So what I do is I take it and then I use my finger and I just push and kinda of make almost like a little rose looking 
well, it's a sick little rose, but kind of a little rose look. Then take your paint and don't come out here and spray. Get close to your bag so that you don't have a lot of the fumes. When I do this and I'm not on camera, uh, I'll wear a mask just so I'm not breathing all those paint fumes. All right, so we're gonna start off. And when we spray, we wanna get a lot of texture, like I said. And when we tap, we're gonna tap very lightly. I don't want to tap really hard and get flat areas like this. I'm gonna show you on the table. This is what I don't want to do, is I don't want to squeeze, I mean, press really hard like this. If I press really hard like this, I get just a big dot, basically, and then it also flattens out my bag. So what I wanna do, keep fluffing your bag and very light taps. Don't forget your edges. And don't fall in love with this because th remember, this is still background for our finish. And like I said, I'm constantly rearranging my bag so that I keep texture on the bag. This is a great finish to do on a pour in place type of countertop where you don't have the ability to tilt or use heat gun, you can still get a really good design. Now I don't wanna go crazy. I'm not trying to cover up everything that I've already done. I'm just adding two. And like I said, don't overthink. We're gonna build and build and build. All right. Kind of take a big step back and look. It's real important that when you're doing a finish that you step back and you evaluate your piece because if you just stay right here over one area, a lot of times you get so focused that you don't take the piece uh, as a whole. And now as I step back, my eye does go to a couple of places where it's a little voided. All right. Okay, let me tell you something else that you don't want to do and I'll show you on the side. You could see that when I tap my bag that I'm doing it very lightly like this, okay? What you and I'm moving my bag each time. What you don't want to do is stay in one spot and tap in one spot because look what it does. It makes mud. So as you tap, you move, you twist your hand so that you get random spots. So all of the Venetian gold granites that I look at seem to have a lot of taupe and a lot of sand type uh, colors to it. So I'm gonna be bringing in my next color, which is dark taupe. This is also Rust-Oleum. This is a satin spray, which is fine. I'm not even gonna change bags. I'm gonna keep the same dirty bag because I actually like when it starts getting paint on it, it starts to really hold the texture a little bit better. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come in with the dark taupe and each level that I do, I'm doing less and less of that color. I still want the white of the substrate to play a part of the finish. So I don't want to cover up that white. Readjusting my bag as I go. And sometimes I like to do a bigger design. So I'll have a little bit bigger area. And then sometimes I just do a quick pounce, depending on the size that I want the color. And it's really good to just kind of alternate that. 
next. And you notice I'm not really having to wait for my paint to dry. As long as I don't keep pouncing in one area, um, I'm not gonna really create mud. So I don't have to wait in between each color change. So again, I'm using the same bag. Now I'm gonna come in with sand. Now this is a gloss. And on this finish, it doesn't really matter if it's a gloss, a sand, even a flat would work at this point. If you see any just real open spaces, I'll try to get in there for sure. You don't want any white space that's gonna be very noticeable. You want that white of our background to just kind of peekaboo through. Okay, so I'm really liking this. I'm liking how the colors are starting to kind of play with each other. So now, even though I have a white background, I'm gonna now come over the top with white spray paint. This is just gonna give it levels of depth. This is when I am going to want to change to a clean bag. If I put that white spray paint on top of a dirty bag, I'm really gonna uh, compromise that white and make it look dirty. All right. So now the white, I don't want a lot of it, but the fact that it is the same tone as our substrate, like I said, it's gonna give us some levels of depth. If you have any really big areas that you wanna break up, maybe you put too much of one color, you can take this white and break it up, and that way you don't have quite so much of one color. Okay, so I've laid down my base colors. I really, really like this, but I'm gonna keep going and keep adding some more dimension and some more texture. So now what we're gonna do, I really like to come in with uh, a product made by Montana Effects and it's called Granite Effects. I'll have all of these products either listed on my website for purchase or I'll have links to where you guys can find them. Now, this product is really cool. You can also get the same product at Home Depot. They have their own type of granite spray. I just really like this one. And I'm gonna show you on the table the way it looks. All right, so it comes out almost looking like little fleck of stone, but it's really not. It's really quite wet. So when you do this, you need to make sure that you give it time to dry before you go to your next step. All right, so when you use this, you don't have to use it all over the whole table. You can just be random, just like natural stone. It's gonna be very random in when, where colors are laid out. So I'm just gonna kinda come over ever so often and spray this. Some areas can be a little bit heavier than other areas. Maybe hit my edge a little bit. This gives an instant kind of a granifying effect and it really does make it look a little more authentic. Now remember, once you do this, you can't touch it because it's gonna take a good hour for it to dry. But we're gonna do a few more steps. I also like to come in and um, add some fracturing lines because a lot of the granite will have just a little bit of a subtle fracture to it. Now, you can get really crazy with this product. It's, called, it's also by Montana and it's called their marble effects and it's what we call silly string. But you can really go crazy with this and get too much. So be very conservative and uh, careful. So practice on the table first, and the reason I like to do that is kind of to find out what, what my uh, spray uh, pattern's gonna be, and I'll kind of practice a little bit before I put it on the table. A lot of this, the success to using this is that you need to do it up high and let it drop down on your table. You don't wanna come across, because if you try to shoot it across, it's gonna come out very, very, very fine. So I'm gonna go up really high. And I'm gonna be just really limited on where I put it. I don't want very much. There, that's all I'm gonna put on there. 
Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the white. Even though you're not gonna be able to see the white quite as much, it's gonna give, like the white spray paint, it's gonna give one more layer of depth, one more layer of interest. Same thing, I'm gonna practice. All right, and here we go. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the white down because you really can't see it unless you look up close. And then, like I said, it really does give a fun layer of interest. One other characteristic that I noticed in all of the sample boards that were sent to me is very, very small flecks of almost a burgundy type of a color. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in with Kona Brown and I'm gonna spray the Kona Brown in a cup because I wanna get just the colorant. Okay, so you wanna make sure you do this in a paper cup. If you do it in plastic or a styrofoam, the uh, paint's gonna eat through that cup. All right, so now I have pure color without all of the propellant. All right, what I wanna do is I wanna come in and I wanna lay down some little drops. So I'm gonna practice off the table to kind of see what the pattern's gonna be. I like to always practice that before I put it on my actual surface. There are several ways you can do this. You can use a toothbrush, you can flip it with your fingernails, but I kind of like just to do it with an old chip brush. And I'm not gonna go crazy with this. I just want a few. Now I like how I have a little pattern here with quite a few and then very random. All right, so I like that. I'm gonna hit my edges. And like I said, you don't wanna go crazy with this. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry for a couple of hours. Then we're gonna come apply the epoxy and do a few more techniques once we put the epoxy down. All right, so what I decided to do uh, at the last minute was to add some mica flakes to the surface. That's gonna give little pockets of what, almost like little mineral pockets. So what we're gonna do is because my surface is still tacky, because the, the paint's still wet, I'm gonna come in and this is what I'm gonna be putting down. It's just a mica flake. And I'm not gonna put this all over the surface. I'm gonna be very kind of specific where I'm gonna put it. Now a lot of time in natural stone, you'll see lines kind of go through almost like a vein. Now I know this is gonna move a little bit when I put my epoxy down, which is okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna kind of lay that down, kind of lay another one down here, kind of move that out. And if you kind of tap it, it'll help it to stick to the paint that's tacky, and that'll help it not to move when I pour down my epoxy. And you, this happens to be gold mica flakes. You could come in with any color that you wanted to. Now, if your surface happens to already be dry, and you wanna come in later and put these flakes, you can get clear spray paint, spray your surface so that it makes it tacky again, sprinkle those uh, flakes on there, and they're gonna wanna stay a little bit easier. Okay, now we'll wait and get ready for the epoxy. Okay, so our surface is dry. Now it's time for the epoxy. I've mixed up Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy Art Coat and the reason I'm using art coat is because this is predominantly a white surface and I just want it to stay really crisp and really white. So using the art coat, I'm gonna get quite a bit more UV protection than with the regular original uh, epoxy from Stone Coat Countertop. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of gold dust and I'm not gonna do a lot. I don't want my gold dust to take over the finish. I want it to just kind of be a hint uh, in the background. So I'm literally, I've got 30 ounces of epoxy and I'm literally going to use this much. I can always add more, but the dust can really take over really quickly. All right, so. Mix that up. Now I'm not gonna use a trial 
on this finish because I don't want to scratch my spray paint and the gold mica that I've already got down on the surface. So I'm going to just use my hand. And as I use my hand, I'm just going to very lightly cup my hand so that I can spread it out. Being really careful as well not to drag too hard over where I've laid my mica flakes. Now my mica flakes are gonna move a little bit and that's okay, it'll give a little bit more of a natural look. Now I'm not letting the epoxy roll over the edge just yet. I'm gonna get it all over the surface first. And you can see when we get that epoxy on the surface how that mica and all of that spray paint just really pops. Now I'll start pulling it off the edge and just kind of let my hand roll over the edge so that epoxy starts to run over. All right, now what I like to do with my edges is I like to take my hands, take that epoxy and roll it underneath. So as the epoxy rolls, the drip won't form right here and I won't get an edge or a ledge. It'll be very smooth. I've rounded over with a quarter inch round over bit, both the top and the bottom of this table. So that really helps the epoxy to flow. This is my favorite part about using my hand because I can really kind of control the epoxy rolling over the edge. Run my hand along the bottom to make sure everything's covered. I need a torch. Oops. All right, so I'm a torch. Now you'll notice I really don't torch my edges. As your epoxy rolls over, the thinnest part of your surface is gonna be right at the breakover, right at your, uh, your rounded edge. So I don't want to heat up the epoxy so much that it becomes very fluid and it runs over and it becomes very thin. So I try not to heat up my edges much at all. Okay, so the next step is going to be us fogging and causing some fracture and uh, some really cool techniques on the epoxy. The thing is, because epoxy is going to be self-leveling, it's continuing to move over the next few hours. I want the epoxy to set up and get start to get really um, sticky and thick before I go to the next step. Because what will happen, if I go right now and fog my surface and hit it with some alcohol like we're gonna do, it'll look really pretty for just a little while and then it's gonna move and get very blurry. So I'm gonna let this set up for about probably 30, maybe 45 minutes and then we're gonna go to the next step. Okay, so we've let the table set about 30 minutes. And many people ask, why 30 minutes? Is it a 30 minute timeline? Is that what I'm looking at? No, what I'm trying to do, instead of focusing on a time, I'm focusing on uh, when my epoxy is going to reach a certain stage. And what I want is it to be starting to get firm and not dripping quite as much. So I kind of pay attention to my drips and when my drips start to slow down and I know that my epoxy has started to slow down on its movement a little bit, that's when I know it's time to go to the next step. 30 minutes is about what we've been waiting. It's 74 degrees in here. So if you're in a really hot area or the area that you're working in is really quite hot, it's 80, 85, your 30 minutes may be 15 minutes. If you're working in a really cool environment, say around right, right at 70, 71, your, your 30 minutes may be an hour. So you just need to kind of Pay attention to what stage your epoxy's in to know when it's time to go forward. So what we're gonna do is we're going to come in with our black spray paint. Now what I wanna do is I wanna create a fracture over the top of this. And the way I'm gonna do it is by fogging some spray paint. And I'm not just gonna hit it immediately uh, with alcohol like we do a lot of the finishes. I'm actually gonna pull it off with some paper towel so I have bigger chunks of the paint left behind and then we're gonna fracture it with the alcohol. All right, so first of all, and I'm not gonna do the whole table, I'm just gonna do certain areas. So first I'm gonna get my paper towel 
And you want to use a, a paper towel that doesn't have a lot of lint in it. The actual, the blue shop towels work really well. Didn't have any, so we're using paper towels. Make a little rose with my fingers, all right? So I have, kind of like we did the bag, so I've kind of pinched it. Then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna fog it. And some of the areas I'm gonna get a little heavier than the others. And then I'm gonna start pulling it off. I don't wanna wait a lot of time in between my fogging and pulling it off. So now I'm gonna pull it off. Now every time I pull it off, I'm gonna change the paper towel so that I'm not just adding more color or making it kind of a dirty look. I'm actually pulling off the paint. So I keep turning it so that I get a clean part of the paper towel. If I keep going back in with the same dirty piece of paper towel, all I'm doing again is making mud. Now you can see how I'm kind of getting chunks of area. So now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of my gold mica uh, spray. And I'm gonna do it in a spray pattern where it's big, bigger drops, not a really fine mist. And then I'm gonna come over here and hit it. Now I don't want to do a lot of, a, of alcohol. It looks like I'm really putting a lot on the surface, but I'm really not. I'm barely even squeezing the trigger. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here, and I'm actually gonna lighten up a little bit more. I wanna lighten up the surface a little bit more. So I'm gonna come in and lighten up a little bit. Now remember, you're pulling off product here. So you're not gonna be able to do this a lot. You wanna kind of keep in mind how much material you're actually pulling off. I'm actually gonna pull off quite a bit. Ended up a little bit darker than what I wanted. But that's the beauty of this technique is that you can lighten up wherever you need it. Okay, now I'm gonna come back in and add a little bit more. I'm looking for my spray paint. There it is. I'm gonna keep the rest of the table a little bit lighter. Let that sit for just a minute. I kind of like that. I think what I'm gonna do also, I do wanna add a little bit of that spray paint in big drops. So I'm gonna come in here in my paper cup and I'm gonna just get the black paint. And I'm gonna come in with a stick and I'm gonna start adding a little bit. There we go. Now, when I fracture this, I'm gonna get some really cool areas that's gonna look a little different than just the fogged areas. Now I'm gonna fog a little bit more over here and come back over with my alcohol. Now it looks like I'm putting quite a bit of alcohol on the surface, but I'm not. I'm barely squeezing. Make sure my top is kind of where I want it to be. All right, now I'm gonna fog my edges. Some places heavier than others. Now this time, instead of hitting it with a gold spray, I'm just gonna come over it with clear. Now on my edges, knowing that my edges are still gonna run a little bit, I'm not gonna add a lot of color because this color is gonna end up running just a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more right here. There we go. Now I'm gonna come over the top of this after this dries and I'll come over with a clear flood coat and then we will do the ultimate top coat and on these tables the uh, customer wants a matte finish which is really going to make this look like really real granite so we'll let this set just a little bit and see if there's anything else that maybe we may want to do to it okay so i've decided because that's 
what I do, that I want to add a little bit more color because I'm so not Walk Away Rhonda, as you all know. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to lighten this up, but not just lighten it up. I want a little bit more color contrast. So now I'm going to come back with my dark taupe and my sand. And I'm going to lightly fog those colors over the top. Not a lot. I mean, I'm not getting crazy with it. I just want a little bit more contrast on my color. All right, now I'm going to come back and hit it with my alcohol. And I'm going to go ahead and use my hands so I can be a little more controlled where I'm putting the alcohol. So now those fractures are going through all the different color paint. Again, I'm not putting a lot of alcohol. It looks like I am, but I'm being very controlled on where it's going. You get too much alcohol on your surface and you'll come back and it's gonna look very blurry. All right, now I'm liking that a lot better. I really like this. Okay, and because I've let my epoxy set up, it's not gonna move quite as much. I'm just kind of taking whatever alcohol's on my hand and flicking it out and getting some little tiny fracture marks. All right, so I'm gonna let this set. See how I like it? And we'll go from there. All right, we'll check back with you in just a few minutes. I'm thinking I like it. I let it sit for about five, six minutes, made sure that my alcohol wasn't gonna cause my surface to move too much. I really like how the fracturing is very soft. That's kind of the look I was going for and how all of the colors that I added kind of melded and made some really cool colors on the surface. Everything's kind of lightened back up and I'm really liking it. So I think I'm gonna stop. Let me know what would you do? Would you go a step further? Would you add a little bit more color to it? Would you add more fracture lines to it? Let me know. Guys, I love hearing from y'all in the comments. So we actually have 24 of these tables to do for a winery. Um, knowing that I'm gonna be going through the same steps, it's super important that I let my customer know that even though the steps are gonna be exactly the same, on every table that because this is a handmade functional art every single table is going to have its own characteristics and it's going to each one of them be different so that's the really cool thing about uh, epoxy you can create over and over again but you'll never get the same thing twice so i'm super happy with this guys i cannot wait to show the customer i can't wait to go do the other 23 that we have to do Okay guys, I hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up. If you do, subscribe to our channel. We're really trying to get those numbers up. Give me some comments. Let me know what you think about this finish. All of the products that we used are available either at Home Depot, all the spray paints, the marble sprays, and the epoxy is available on my website, rk3designs.com. And I'll also have a link to where you can get the mica flakes. So until next time, remember guys, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.